face serious charges that could put this mogul behind bars. We are told it could be up to 25 years. Now, Harvey Weinstein's own brother, Bob Weinstein, is now calling his sibling sick and depraved and telling The Hollywood Reporter, quote, well, I wanted him to get the justice that he deserves. That's his brother. And on Saturday morning, the Motion Picture Academy, they voted to boot the once revered director from its membership. Now, sadly, this is the same Motion Picture Academy that still recognizes and worships convicted pedophile Roman Polanski and people like Bill Cosby among its ranks. Are they going to clean it up altogether? Which brings us to the next point. The accusations surrounding Harvey Weinstein's behavior should come as no surprise. After Hollywood's casting couch culture of sexual abuse, it has been an open secret in Tinseltown, in the media, for all too long by those seeking roles in the big screen. For example, actress Tracy Melchior, she's going to join us in a few minutes, talked about the commonality of this culture in Hollywood with Larry King. She was warning about this back in 2005. Take a look. In case you hadn't heard, there's a lot of wealthy men in Hollywood who like attractive girls to be around, and sometimes they'll offer to pay for things for you. Now, Tracy will tell her story, and it's tragic, later in the program and what she experienced. And she is part of an ever-growing number of actresses and women calling out this despicable, disgusting, toxic culture. Actress Rose McGowan, who was accusing Harvey Weinstein of sexual assault, she tweeted Hollywood was, quote, a rape machine, and that she was blacklisted because she dared to tell the truth. Now, this culture also extends to the music industry. Kaya Jones, remember her? She's been on this show, former member of the Pussycat Dolls. She speaks out tweeting quote my truth I wasn't in a girl group I was in a prostitution ring oh and we happen to sing and be famous while everyone who owned us they made money Kyle will also join us later in the program now sadly not everyone is condemning the casting couch culture in Hollywood and in fact of all people Woody Allen you might remember he's the actor who married his longtime girlfriend's daughter the great moral barometer he is he told the BBC quote tragic for poor women that were involved, sad for Harvey that his life is so messed up. Woody Allen had to later clarify those remarks after being called out, and then he condemned Weinstein, but what does he really believe? And then you have the mainstream media, NBC, others, who have helped cover up Weinstein's misdeeds for years. Let's not forget about Democrats, more than happy to take hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in political donations from this movie mogul for decades. And this, by the way, includes the DNC, which is now taking heat for not donating last cycle's Weinstein contributions to charity, but rather three political groups. They really want that money. No word if the DNC will return or donate all of the estimated $300,000 it received from the powerful producer over the years. And Hillary Clinton, she's up to her eyeballs in this. She's received tens of thousands of dollars from Weinstein, and last week she announced plans to donate that money to charity. But we learned over the weekend, the spokesman for the Clinton Foundation indicated the hundreds of thousands of dollars that Weinstein donated to the Clinton Foundation will not be returned. They spent it. And meanwhile, Hillary Clinton wants to lecture all of us about the misogyny epidemic in America. How out of touch can Hillary possibly be? Watch this. Sexism and misogyny are endemic in our society. And I do try to take readers on a journey with me. There seems now to be a willingness by more and more women and girls to claim uh, their rights in a very explicit way, not an apologetic way, not like, oh, you know, excuse me, let me express my opinion, but no, I have an opinion, I want to tell you what that opinion is. She's the same woman that took millions and millions of dollars from countries that systematically abuse women and literally kill gays and lesbians and also literally, you know, go after Christians and Jews. She's trying to distract from the deeds long associated with Weinstein. Now she's trying to her and her creepy husband. Watch this. Let's remember where we go here. All I can tell you is that I did not hear those things. Look, we just elected a person who admitted sexual assault to the presidency. Uh, so there's a lot of other issues that are swirling around these uh, kinds of behaviors that need to be addressed. And I think it's uh, important that we stay focused and shine a bright spotlight and try to get people to understand how damaging this is. And the women coming forward is the only way that that story will be told. Excuse me, Hillary. Your husband was basically a groper in chief the entire 
entire time you've been married to him. And in case you forgot, here's a little refresher from those women that accused your own husband of sexual harassment, assault, and even rape. And you sat silently by and assisted in engaging in character assassination, smears, and slanders against those women, women who bravely spoke out. Take a look. You described the scene where he was biting on your lip and then when it was all over, he was leaving. I said, you better put some ice on that. Yeah, and casually put on his sunglasses and walked out the door. It was a terrible ordeal for me and I, no woman should be subjected to it. But it you, was an assault. He assaulted you? Yes. He, he And you, he touched, grabbed, fondled yes. and kissed you yes. against, against your will? Yes. And it's an allegation that is not made by one woman, it's made by multiple Many women. Many of us. I said, well, I may need to be going or something. And next thing you know, he pulled down his, he sat down, pulled, pulled down his pants, his whole, everything. And he was exposed. And I said, I'm not that kind of girl. And I need to be getting back to my, to my desk. And Hillary, you sat silent as your creepy husband went after and abused all of those women. And you assisted in the character assassination of all these women. And we all know, by the way, Harvey Weinstein helped finance the defense of your husband's shenanigans. Now, Weinstein literally bankrolled Clinton's defense team. Hillary, you had to know. Stop lying. We don't believe that you're a champion of women's rights. We'll get back to Hillary in just a minute. But let's talk about late night host Jimmy Kimmel. Last week, Kimmel lashing out at his critics after they called him out for not shedding a tear, giving another emotional monologue about Harvey Weinstein's victims. And Kimmel said he was not the, quote, moral conscience of America. Well, this weekend, he doubled down on stupid. Let's watch stupid. You've heard there's one conservative commentator in particular who says, who made Jimmy Kimmel the moral arbiter? I'm not. I mean, uh, yeah, I agree with them. I'm nobody's moral arbiter. I mean, you don't have to watch the show you don't have to listen to what I say like three years ago I was equally liked by Republicans and Democrats and then <laughs> Republican numbers went way down like 30 percent or whatever and you know as a talk show host that's not ideal but I did I would do it again in a heartbeat so you don't mind if Republicans turn off your show they're not watching anymore I don't say I don't mind I mean I love for everyone I want everyone with a television to watch the show but if they're so turned off by my opinion on uh, health care and gun violence then I don't know I probably won't want to have a conversation with them anyway good riddance well not good riddance but riddance <laughs> No, not good riddance, but riddance. Okay, bye-bye. Now, it's clear Kimmel is going down the same path as Stephen Colbert, wants to be a left-wing comedian only. But Kimmel's attacks didn't stop there. During an interview with the New York Times, Kimmel's was asked if he thinks his critics are trying to influence what he talks about on his show. This is how Kimmel responded, quote, Well, I think some of them are. I think some of them are just trying to get Fox News to hire them as on-air commentators. It's sad. You see people try to engage me in battle, that they're just trying to give their careers a boost. Well, I won't be a part of that with a rare exception. All right, Jim, let's engage over you being a creepy old man trying to get 18-year-old young girls to guess what's in your pants and grab what's in your pants with two hands and ask them to kiss it. Jim, you look like a creepy old man. And we'll show that tape in a second. Now, meanwhile, this weekend marked the sixth week now of the NFL. And despite Roger Goodell calling for all players to stand, some did not. And reports, according to them, players from four teams didn't stand or come out of the tunnel for the national anthem. And the New Orleans Saints did something pretty despicable. According to a local paper, the announcer at the game asked for a moment of silence for a police officer that was killed on Friday. When the players kneeled, the fans didn't react well. And they started booing in the stadium. The New Orleans coach said, today it was a misunderstanding. Also over the weekend, Hillary Clinton defended the NFL players who kneeled during the anthem. Watch her. So you have to resist what are very clear, uh, what we call dog whistles mm. to that base. Uh, that's what the black athletes kneeling was about. That was not against our anthem or our flag. That was actually kneeling as a reverent position. It was to demonstrate in a peaceful way against racism and injustice in our criminal system. Now, President Trump, he was asked about Hillary Clinton's remarks, and here's what he said. I hope Hillary runs. Is she going to run? I hope. Hillary, please run again. When you take a knee, she, well, that's why she lost the election. I mean, honestly, it's that thinking that is the reason she lost the election. 
when you go down and take a knee or any other way, you're sitting, essentially, for our great national anthem. You're disrespecting our flag and you're disrespecting our country. If Hillary Clinton actually made the statement that in a form sitting down during the playing of our great national anthem is not disrespectful, then I fully understand why she didn't win. I think that her statement in itself is very disrespectful to our country. The president's right. Americans fought, bled, and died for this country, fighting under that flag, and everyone should at least unite and stand for that, for the flag, for the national anthem, in reverence of those who did sacrifice for us. And what Hillary Clinton said is disrespectful to the country, and she's siding with cop haters. But unfortunately, this controversy is not going away anytime soon. The only thing leaving are the fans and also sponsors. The man who started all of this, former 49, 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick, he filed a grievance against the NFL saying NFL owners are blacklisting him and guess what Kaepernick is taking a page out of the left-wing playbook and he's actually blaming President Trump you can't make this up now Kaepernick's attorney Mark Garagos have known him for years smart attorney he released a statement on behalf of his client it reads in part quote if the NFL as well as all professional sports leagues is to remain a meritocracy then principled and peaceful political protest which the owners themselves made great theater imitating weeks ago should not be punished and athletes should not be denied employment based on partisan political provocation by the executive branch of our government this is beyond ridiculous by the way who is calling Kaepernick to lecture us keep in mind Kaepernick gave money to a charity that defends a cop killer Kaepernick wore socks depicting cops as pigs he openly supported a communist murdering thug dictator Fidel Castro but somehow it's President Trump's fault that the NFL doesn't want any part of him and also while Kaepernick did have a great career early in his career people saw his throwing regressing his skills diminishing also reports from some of his teammates that thought he was selfish and arrogant remember football is a team sport but now Kaepernick wants to force all NFL teams or one NFL team to hire him that's not how this world works and I also want to put something into perspective here while people are now demanding that Colin Kaepernick get a job there are real American heroes that are going underreported guess what according to the FBI new numbers in 2016 alone 118 law enforcement officers died in the line of duty protecting all of us and over 57,000 were assaulted protecting us those are the people that should be honored while the national anthem is being played along with our brave troops joining us now with reaction he was a member of the Trump transition team the Reverend Daryl Scott is with us and also civil rights attorney Daryl Parks Reverend Scott let me start with you and get your general reaction for all of her life Hillary Clinton all of her life has enabled her husband who had severe problems with women even accused of rape and she was part of an effort to smear slander besmirch we're gonna get lectured by her on this issue and she's not even given the money back that the Clinton Foundation had well you know Hillary Clinton she's always tried to embrace victimization I mean she's on her victimization tour right now the only victims she doesn't side with are the victims of her husband's um, impropriety but you know she refrained from commenting on Harvey Weinstein for so many days because she just didn't know what to say because she was aware of what he was doing and then every one of them her and the rest of Hollywood out of fear of reprisal until he got fired they would not reply once he was fired they felt the coast was clear and they all have the same lame excuse oh I was so shocked that I don't I didn't know what to say well you know that's garbage but she, she helped to enable their smearing Dar yeah. Darrell Parks let me go to you if a country that tells women how to dress, won't let them drive, won't let them vote, where marital rape is not a crime, domestic abuse is not a crime, women can't travel or leave the house without a man's permission, gays and lesbians are killed as a matter of law in many of these countries, and Christians and Jews are persecuted. My question, Daryl Parks, would you take a penny from countries that abuse human rights like that? Well, well, Sean, I think uh, we have to always be concerned that. about any yes no. country. Uh, 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 you got to answer. Well, I don't think it's a yes or no question. It is I a think yes. you, you got to always be mindful of what people do in their country. I'd be very concerned. Would you take if money from? If, well, wait a minute. Would you take money from the best charity you work for? I know, for example, Pastor Scott has a great charity in Cleveland that uh, I want to support his charity. Okay. Would you take money from a country that abuses women, kills gays and lesbians, and persecutes Christians and Jews? Do you want that dirty, filthy money? I don't. 
you shouldn't want it. I think you got to always question you anybody that has you those type it? of things going on. I don't think you have to be concerned about it. Very concerned you, about but taking would you that take type of money. it? Not be concerned. Would you take the millions from those countries? They're offering it to you. Oh, you probably wouldn't. You, you wouldn't. probably wouldn't. Hillary did, Pastor Scott. That's the point. Millions, and they bought her silence on the abuse of all these different groups that she claims she has a monopoly on. Yes, and you know, Hillary, that's actually was supposed to be her platform, women's empowerment. So how can you take money from uh, someone who is uh, opposed to the platform that you profess to stand on? She's a fraud. She's, she's been a fraud. She's always been a fraud. I let me call play a, a tape here. I think those She's are strong fraud. words. Hillary's a fraud. Let Hillary's, me play a tape. Hillary's a fraud. We got little Jimmy, crazy uncle Jimmy Kimmel. I want to play this tape. Him doing a show asking girls as young as 18 to use their hands to figure out what's in his pants and to use their mouths. This is the same guy that feigns, you know, moral superiority and outrage over topics. He didn't have one joke about Weinstein. Let's roll the tape. This game show is called Guess What's In My Pants. Now, I've stuffed something in my pants, and you're allowed to feel around on the outside of the pants. You have 10 seconds to then guess what is in my pants. You ready? Set. Go. You should use two hands. Two hands. You're going to make a fine wife. I've done this before, haven't you? All right. Just right there? I mean, yeah, just, just a few more seconds. How old are you? 18. Okay, good. You sure of that? Because uh, Uncle Jimmy doesn't need to do time. Maybe it would be easier if you put your mouth on it. You've got a nice technique there. You could get in the Olympics with this, let me tell you. Is that, is that Uncle Jimmy creepy? How perverted is that? For, who thought it had skit? That was like the most disgusting, perverted skit that you ever want to see in your life. Yeah, but he's the great moral. It certainly shouldn't be on television. What's that? What's that? And certainly, that, that's, not the, that's, that's not the type of thing we want to see on television, especially when you have young women watching. Um, that, that's just not uh, the type of television we want to see uh, in, a, in our country. All right, got to run here. Pastor Scott, I am going to be at your church. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be well. I'm going to be in Dallas on Sunday morning, and Robert Jeffers Church. They're going to be in your church six o'clock on Sunday night. I hear it's getting a lot of play up in Cleveland. Oh yeah, it's getting a lot of play. A lot of people are excited. I got a lot of friends coming. It's going to be a great time. God is going to move that night through Psalm Hanley. Hey, hey, <laughs> there's better <laughs> options for God. I'm telling you, He can do better than little old Sean Hannity. Trust me. Uh, we'll see you then. Look forward to it. And thank you both. When we come back, we have a big announcement about breaking news coming up tonight. Plus, just how bad is the casting couch problem in Hollywood for people that want to be in movies on TV and the music industry and others two women who have experienced firsthand how awful it is will they share their stories with you next Welcome back to Hannity. So in my opening monologue, I detail the casting couch culture throughout Hollywood, the music business, the TV business. Now, in the case of Harvey Weinstein, we have yet another warning from over 10 years ago. Nobody paid attention. Here's what Courtney Love said about Weinstein back in 2005. Hi, Central. Do you have any advice for a young girl moving to Hollywood? Um, I'll get lively with this. Like Harvey Weinstein invites you to a private party in the four seasons, does Recording artist Kaya Jones is also calling out the music industry. Kaya, who used to be a member of the Pussycat Dolls, she tweeted this weekend, My truth, I wasn't in a girl group. I was in a prostitution ring. Oh, and we happened to sing and be famous while everyone who owned us made the money. We reached out to the founder of the Pussycat Dolls, Robin Anton, and she denies what Kaya is saying. Here with reaction, recording artist Kaya Jones, actress Chasey, uh, Tracy Lindsay Melchior is with us. Kaya, how old were you when you first got into music? I was 12 when I first got signed. Wow. And how yeah. quickly did the Predators begin to move in? Well, I think that's the thing. They didn't move in right away for me. I didn't receive anything until I was 18 years old and I joined the Pussycat Dolls. So I think had I not had a career before that where I knew that there are people with integrity, um, it wouldn't have probably been alarming, but it was super alarming because I had been in the business and never had any advances. And when you say is a prostitution ring, those are strong words. People want to understand this. Oh, well, you know, when you have a den mother from hell that's controlling the girls, manipulating the mind, and verbally and mentally abusive, what's the difference between that and a pimp in order to control the narrative? Um, that's what was done on a day-to-day -day basis by Miss Anton. And 
furthermore, you know, it, it was a constant thing of being, a, you know, attacked at the back of cars and innuendos by different executives. She knew and everyone in the group went through it. In other words, you were attacked by those people that had all the power over you and it was a, on a regular basis. Yeah. And yeah. I had to decide for myself my moral compass. I walked away at 21 years old from a massive conglomerate that was launching us into orbit. How bad could it be for a 21 year old to walk away from her dreams? Yeah. I, was, I knew I was, walk, I was standing on a limb. Uh, Tracy, I, I know you spent years and, and you are on the bold and the beautiful and, and many of these successful daytime shows. And you had a really, you had a horrific time. Why don't you tell us what happened? Well, first off, I want to be clear, none of my experiences were um, with my producers during soaps. Um, I had lovely producers there. It was prior to that. Um, but the entertainment industry attracts a lot of women who are looking for validation and approval and, in my case, um, male attention that I didn't get at home from a father. And so you combine that with wealthy men who um, are in a position to advance your career and I think one of the things that I think that's really important is that at that time I think I had a false idol of fame and fortune so I was willing to sacrifice and do whatever it took for that and it's interesting how people can sense that or something because I was put into so many situations whereas my friends who um, maybe weren't as vulnerable seemed to you know get around it but for me it was I I felt into situations that um, I was vulnerable to, for sure. And you got raped. I did. Not in Hollywood. That was prior, um, at 16. Um, and I think that what happens is like, I, it doesn't just start when you get to Hollywood. I think a lot of it happens before we get there. Um, to allow, It's almost like I was groomed prior to getting to Hollywood to be the perfect um, candidate for these producers and directors, which I did end up um, falling victim to, which I hate that word victim. But You know, um, it, it, it seems like, the, and I'll ask both of you this, Tracy, we'll start with you. Young girls, and maybe before they're 18, around 18, they have dreams. They want to be in the music industry. They want to be on television. They want to be in the movie industry. Yeah. And the, how common is this? That basically they're told it's a quid pro quo. You want a movie role, you want to get in the band, you want a chance, you got to go through us first. Tracy. For me, it was never that blatant. Um, for was it me, subtle it was just but like, and obvious though? Well, it was, it was like you knew who could get you a job. You knew who this director was by name. You knew who this producer was. And if they're inviting you to dinner or to something, you're like, oh my gosh, this is great. Because you're thinking it is regarding your career. And then you or get to just... dinner, and what, do you, what is happening in most cases at dinner? They reveal well, their true times, intentions? Well, honestly, Sean, a lot of these dinners, I wasn't the only girl there. There were many. It was, you know, a flock. And it, it was just... Um, a selection process, I, I guess. Wow. And um, I think that it was, it, you were actually flatter, or I was. I think it was like a, a compliment that you were chosen. Um, and I was just so vulnerable for wanting that validation and approval. You wrote a great um, book, by that, the way, Breaking the, the Perfect Ten about the Ten Commandments and Getting Your Life Back, which I thought was great. Um, thank Kaya, you. how frequent do they play on the ambitions or the dreams of young mm -hmm. people that you have seen in all the years you've been doing this? Yeah, well, there are good people in this business too, Sean, but ultimately there are a lot of predators in this business. We've heard the stories from Corey Feldman, we've heard the stories from Corey Haim, we've heard, you know, Tom Petty has a song called Joe, talking about, you know, getting a young girl and a young boy and um, making money off of them and controlling them. It is a scary thing. This is what needs to happen, is women need to continue to speak out. Girls in my group, girls in other groups, or in entertainment period, need to speak no. out. Because you can take out the trash right. at that Last point. Question. They're good people too. Is, are the people mm -hmm. that are creepy well known? Does everybody know? Everybody, at most know. Most if you're, it depends on the company. Most know, but mm -hmm. it depends on the company. Not all companies are bad, but there are the select companies that mm -hmm. have men that push things on young girls. And it's you know you're impressionable. You're you know, a young woman. And, I knew. And the political side of it is you know like the Clintons. 
You know, Hillary Clinton didn't say a word about her husband. Now she's lecturing us on all these issues. And she takes money from these countries that abuse women, abuse them, Correct. persecute Christians right. and Jews, and kill gays and lesbians. And then she mm -hmm. so sanctimoniously will lecture everybody else and, and right. accuse Mick Romney of misogyny because he had, right. uh, he had literally resumes of women he wanted to hire. That, you know, slander mm -hmm. him. Uh, neither one of you deserve that. I'm glad you're speaking out, and hopefully this horrible practice stops. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. When we come back, President Trump has very sharp words for the NFL players disrespecting our flag, and later, a big announcement, big breaking news coming up this week. I'll tell you about it. Coming up. The NFL should have suspended some of these players for one game. Not fire them, suspended them for one game. And then if they did it again, it could have been two games and three games and then for the season. You wouldn't have people disrespecting our country right now. The people of our country are very angry at the NFL. All you have to do is look at their ratings and look at their stadiums. You see empty seats where you never saw them before. A lot of people are very angry at it. It is highly disrespectful. They shouldn't do it. President's right. That was him earlier today slamming NFL players who continue to kneel during our national anthem. Here with Reaction, author of Liberalism or How to Turn Good Men into Whiners, Weenies and Wimps, former NFL player, Super Bowl winner Burgess Owen, also with us, the spokesperson for the National Association of Police Athletic Activities League, as well as the CEO of the Brewer Group, former NFL player Jack Brewer is with us, and also on the legal side of this, we have Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett is with us. Mr. Brewer, let me start with, with you, um, you are aware that in the NFL that there was a player on the 15th anniversary of 9-11-01 wanted to put the date on his cleats. I don't think anybody on TV could see it. And 9-11-01, never forget. You do know that you can't twerk and you do know that you can't shoot a fake bow and arrow in the end zone and you can't taunt other players. So there are plenty of restrictions of free speech in the NFL. You understand that, right? Of course I do, Sean. He do. Um, but the que mm -hmm. Of course. But the, the question in this situation to me, I think, goes a lot deeper than that. You know, we can continue to, to, to focus on these things, but we all know that the National Football League and its players aren't trying to disrespect the flag. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I would probably stand up with our flag as well, you know, honor our, our, our soldiers and all of our military, but it goes back to what are the actual solutions? You know, we keep having this debate, and we're, and we're not really identifying what the solutions are to these uh, problems. I, I'm willing to help go, out. I'll donate money to the right really? charity Sean, to help inner city kids I already have Sean, in my life. I'm in. Sean, I know you have, and you're a great man, you're a great man for that, and I, lo and I love your uh, approach to it. So I'm, I'm asking you, you have the ear of the president. Let's get these African-American players like myself I will, into the White first House. Things Let's first. have these conversations. you got you to respect. If we can't unite on the men that fought, <coughs> bled, and died fighting under that Agreed. flag and not respect that, we can't get to square one. Burgess. And the vast agree, majority agree, of Jack. NFL players I think, agree. I think that... I agree with Jack. We need to deal with solutions. Uh, and, and one of the biggest things we can do is identify where our problem is. Uh, we have a problem which we have uh, a white Marxist organization that has indoctrinated our kids for the last 15 years with anti-white, anti-flag, uh, uh, anti-American. Everything you see on the sideline today has been, been flooded into our community, the liberal filth, for 15 years. It's called black entertainment television. It's not owned by white pe black people. It's white people with a black facade, black employees with a message that's anti-American. So you have all these kids that are growing up in this environment, <clears throat> they become millionaires, they're going to believe what they were taught to believe. So we have a, a, we have, we're up against a very evil ideology, guys, and we understand that, and we pull these guys from, out, from, from behind their, their corporate uh, boardrooms, have them stand in front and of Burgess, American people, and explain what they've done to us. You know, in, in a way, didn't the NFL and sports in general really help unite us in this country? Isn't it like one area that transcends all race and... And, I, you know, I remember players after games, they get in a circle, both teams, even the refs sometimes, and they'd say a prayer together, um, which I thought was really cool after you saw the best of the best, you know, most talented athletes fight it out on the field and they got along. And the fans, everybody, there was no black and white. There was no black, white, well, and Hispanic. There was just great players and fans that loved talented people. 
You're describing the Judeo-Christian values that our country has been built on, and every generation became better and better. We, get, we were learning to look at each other from inside out, not outside in. What we're against in ideologies is against our American way. So understand, there are people who love the fact that we're divided. We love the fact that, that our young people are growing up hating white people, or hating our flag. They get their power from that. And we have a group of black elitists, a relative black class people, who sit back and let it happen because they profit from this process. All right, great. Well, this let is me... a great conversation, guys. It's time we had it. I think we could actually come up. I think in, in that sense, I think we can come up, and Jack, maybe be, be, he might be right on this. In the end, maybe we'll come up with some good solutions. Otherwise, the NFL is going to be over. People won't go anymore if this continues. Y Colin yeah. Kaepernick, uh, Greg, is the guy, he supports a charity that supports a cop killer. Cops depicted as, ki uh, as pigs on his socks. S supports a murdering thug dictator. Right. He got it started. Now he thinks that he owes him a position and that it's a meritocracy. Mark Garagos' lawyer said, is it his diminished skills or is it the politics that owners are rejecting? He can't win his case because under the collective bargaining agreement upon which he's filed the grievance, he has to prove a conspiracy among team owners to prevent him from playing. It has to be verbal or written. He has no ability to prove that because he cannot compel witnesses or subpoena documents. Well, they're trying to get the documents from everybody in the league. Do you just have a random ability to do that? No, you do not. Absolutely not. And in fact, the collective bargaining agreement says the burden of proof is on Kaepernick and simply showing that he is a qualified player and unsigned is not enough to prove conspiracy and collusion. Do you think, Jack or, or Burgess, that this is a conspiracy against Colin Kaepernick? Jack, we'll start with you. I think it's way deeper than that. I mean, I, I don't think you can say it's, a, it's strictly a conspiracy. I think these business owners, I call them business owners because that's what they are. I think they're looking out for their bottom line at the end of the day. Just like Is, most there, is, there, a pro is there anything wrong America. with that? Uh, no, this is America. You have. A, I'm a business owner myself. Tim, I, I would argue Tim Tebow was maybe maybe he t t experienced some discrimination because he used to take a knee to pray to God. Yeah, well, well, no it's question. It's but at the at the end of the day, the, the man should be able to protest if he wants to. I well, mean, that's, no. his, that's there, his right. There is no First Amendment it, right to engage in free speech in the workplace. They're on the job in uniform on the field. They're at work. Supreme Court has repeatedly said you have no First Amendment protection in the workplace. By the way, I have to hey, negotiate this, when this I can say and not say on this program those are not the rules <laughs> during the contract time. What's that? Hey, guys, this you get is, the last is, word. This is uh, Free Enterprise 101. In order to get a job in, America, in the American system, people have to like you, and then employees have to feel that you're a good return on investment. He's right. blown it in both fashions and forget the entitlement issue. Anybody this is have good ideas? It's, 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 welcome. I'm in. I'll donate money so can help the murders Sean, in Chicago. Set, the, I'll set pay that money. meeting up, man. What? Set that meeting up. We need to have conversations. Set, set right. that meeting up. This, you have conversations. this is the American way. This is what we do best. We win, exactly. we come together and support each other. That's yeah. right. And then we can play Thank ball, you, too. And play ball. honor our, <laughs> our troops and our flag. Coming up next, the president. He's fulfilling his campaign promises, totally decimating, dismantling Obama's legacy. Sebastian Gorka, Austin Goosby, they're next also. Big breaking news coming this week. TikTok, straight ahead. This is our war, and you all didn't start it. The establishment started it. But I will tell you one thing, you all are going to finish it. There's a time and season for everything. And right now, it's a season of war against a GOP establishment. Steve Bannon over the weekend saying he's going to war with the GOP establishment. We saw it in Alabama. Today, President Trump said Bannon has a lot of good points, but he's going to try and work with Mitch McConnell in the interim. Here with the reaction to all of this, the author of the best-selling book, Defeating Jihad, the Make America Great Again Coalition Chief Strategist and former Deputy Assistant to the President, Sebastian Gorka, and former Obama economic advisor, close friend of Hannity, Austin Goolsby is with us. Um, Austin, I know you're going to like a little of this, but your party has zero vision. And when there's no vision or insight, the people perish. So we've already perished under Obama. Uh, I want to say this. I'm with Steve Bannon in this sense. We can't lose control of the House and Senate. Mm -hmm. But if Mitch McConnell can't do his job, go. Get out. Mm -hmm. And let's not elect people that aren't bold and going to fight to get the job done. What they did on health care right. was a disgrace. Mm -hmm. Just look at the last nine months. 
What has the GOP establishment done for this president? On November the 8th, the people of America chose. They chose a person who was anti-establishment, who had a very clear message. Obamacare, national security, the economy, the border. What's happened? What has the GOP done? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But there's something amazing that's happening on climate, on trade, on... Look what he did last week on health... What he did last week, the president, on his own on yeah. health care, was brilliant and it's going to help every American. You form an association, then you have the benefit of corporations. It's buying power, buying across state lines, not subject to ACA or state rules. It's stunning. After the speech that Steve and I gave... Yeah, you, I, by the way, your speech was great. That's thank all. you, Sean. I, I sat down with about half a dozen true Trump White House people afterwards, oh. a block away from the White House, and I said to them, so who's giving the president advice on Obamacare, on, on, on the JCPOA? And they said, you know what? Nobody. He's getting the opposite advice, and what's he doing? Like a steam train. He's, he's just, he's, he's blasting He's through. dismantling guys, the entire Obama legacy, almost single-handedly. Now, Austin, I know you're probably happy you think you, Republicans are fighting. You guys got to get out more. I got a I mean, question. Truly. I got a question for you. What, do, what is okay. the Democratic vision for the country? What do they want to do for the country? Give us the top five items. Go. Look, I think top what they items. want to do, what they should should want to do. What there's are the top a, There's five? an argument within the Democratic Party. Number one, one. restore wage growth to working restore, people. In the you mean like Obama did? Okay, two. <laughs> yeah, in the last three years of Obama, the last three middle years. class wages going up. Yeah, two, only only thirteen million more in food stamps, eight million more in poverty. Keep going. What's number two? No, no, Sean, you're quoting numbers from three years ago. I'm quoting numbers number for the two. eight years of Obama. Maintain, God forbid I keep them accountable. Maintain the expansion of health. Care. Oh, grow that Obamacare. It's not Obama bad enough. All right, more Obamacare. Now, so what's number second. three? In, can we get okay, this guy to run for three? office? It would be great. It would what, be great for look, us. Be I'm great not, for I'm us. run from office. What's number but three? My point is, with President Obama and with President Bush and with President Clinton, all three of them had major legislative accomplishments in their first year. Donald Trump has none. Well, he's got both say houses this. of Congress, and he's fighting with his own party. It makes but no sense. But I actually sense. think it's healthy. I'm going to tell you why. And Dr. Gorka, if I think politicians are all governed by fear, mm -hmm. I saw a very fearful Mitch McConnell today, and I think the reason Corker got out is he knew he was going to get oh, yeah. he was going to get primary, and yeah. he, I saw that's why he's now lashing the out. The winds of change. They're worried. This yeah. weekend, Steve's speech, my speech, we rattled their cage, and this is the right message to send because you know what Sean, the left the left does what they do, Democrats. and that's fine. That's okay. We expect the left to do that for ideological reasons, but when our side that says they have our values, gets elected and then betrays us and does nothing in Capitol Hill, that's the bigger obstacle. You know what? You know one truth, and I'll say this to Austin, Austin, I will give your party credit. You guys stick together yes. through thick and thin, and there's not one person that wavers. <laughs> Republicans aren't like that, so I can see. What are the other three, what are the other three big vision, expanding Obamacare and fulfilling well, wait, Obama's Sean, economic we, disaster? How can we, What's how the other can three? Not answer? How can you not dwell on the fact that the Republican governors have now come out and said what Donald Trump's proposing on health care would be catastrophic it, it, for their me. states? They're the, begging. Please don't do this. Corporations have had this exemption since 1974 where they can buy, because they have offices in different cities, they're not subject to state rules or Obamacare rules. They can buy in bulk at lower prices, better plans across state lines with more competition, including cooperatives, health so savings. So let's have some bipartisan ideas. Don't don't just go light everything you can see on well, like fire. The Democrats Even do. Republicans like, are saying this. one Democrat that's going to support President Trump. You guys just oppose him because he breathes. They won't support President Trump. If he gave every American a million dollars, you'd hate it's not him. thought through. Even Republicans are saying this approach on water, is deeply mistaken. If he walked on water, they'd say he can't swim. Right? Yeah. I mean, come on. Exactly. Come on. If he walked on water, they'd say he can't <laughs> swim. <laughs> um, but he can't give us the five ideas because Obama failed spectacularly. I went on Fox Business earlier today, and I said, look at look at the economy. We've just broken what? the last 28th record, the host had to say, no, we just bro broke the 46th record. Well, you That's had to be Lee well, No, 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 it's actually guys, a You just campaign. lost jobs job. for the first it, it time in some seven years. 47 records, historic records. And that's good for everybody. You don't have to have shares. Your 401k, if you've got a retirement plan, you're making money. We have increased by a quarter the wealth of the stock market. By the way, you know, Austin, you were part of the, yeah. the, the foundational team that that for the Obama economy. How is it he's Thank the you. first president in American history 
to accumulate more debt than every other president before him combined, A, and B, never reach in one a, year, a, that's th not correct. never reach one year of his presidency 3% GDP growth and double the debt. There is one significant break from the Obama legacy that I will admit, and that is in the time that Donald Trump has been in office, job creation has been about 20% lower than Excuse it was me, a million last jobs year in eight months. President what are you Obama talking about? A million time. new jobs so in eight months. I don't know that you... Wake up. Where are you living? Chicago, that's why. <laughs> Just look at the numbers, Sean. We're growing. We've added about 1.1 million Sebastian. jobs. We had we, added 1.4 uh, million at this The president, the people on the outside, Steve, myself, the Make America Great Coalition, we are dismantling Obama's disastrous legacy brick by brick. Join us. I'm in. McConnell. Get on board or get out of the way. Up next, a big announcement. You're going to want to hear this straight ahead. So two years ago, I started working on a very special project. Why? Because Hollywood sucks and they don't make movies we want to see that inspire us. I am now the executive producer of a, it's actually an award-winning film.